Hello everybody, Storm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online Dawn Trail. In the last episode, we headed over to the home of the Hanu Hanu people in Uzama Uka and their village of Akanu. I'm getting those names right. And we met the Elector, um, Linu Hanu? Linu Hanu, I think was her name. Um... And she gave us the a challenge. Um, they are growing, they grow reeds here, which are critically important for their society, but their crops are failing. And so we've been tasked with helping to improve the reed crop. So that's what we're working on. Upon inspection, I didn't see anything immediately obvious other than the wildlife, in addition to the Hanu themselves, seem kind of lethargic. And the Hanu, kind of understandable because they just got hit by that nasty storm and it caused a lot of damage and injuries and even some fatalities. So, um, they're obviously not feeling great about that. So... Uh, Wuglamat decided that what needed to happen was they need to hold their festival, the Ihihana festival, so that it will lift their spirits, and hoping that ho solving that one problem might lead to a solution to the other problem. And as it turns out, upon inspecting the uh, festival float, which is a boat that is fashioned to look like a bird, um, it is comprised of various materials that are used in arcane devices. And the float itself is an arcane focus used to help channel energies to improve the crops. So, in fact, holding the festival should help with the harvest issue. Because it is a, har a harvest festival. So, um, we've been working on getting the materials to repair the float. Working with uh, this ship right here. Uk Evu. And we got the gemstones that are needed to fix the eye. And Wuglamot should have gotten the wood. So I think we're ready to get going. Alright, Wugavu. Uh, thanks to the third promise and her mighty swings, we've collected some suitable logs of Uyuipo, a wood of the Abakshia, or an Abokisha, that's what that was. Well, we found some, I think. Yes, these are excellent samples, a good quantity too. At this stage, you'll likely surmise that the lifting of wings encourages the crops to grow, but not exactly how, eh? Well, you're in for a treat. If all goes to plan, the results should be spectacular. Now, to get to work crafting these pieces for the float, I could use an assistant, versed in the arcane arts, to enhance the Uyuipo's conductivity. Ryle is volunteering, then I'd be delighted to help. Everyone else should head back to Akanu. We'll join you at the fur at the float once the work here is complete. All right, so back over to Akanu. Here we are. Lino Hanu? No, I think Lino Hanu is the festival leader. I can't remember what the elector's name is. Alright, as Wukabu said, the festival really is a spectacle to behold. Alright, Wuglamat. Getting the Uyuipo was a trial in and of itself. At first, Wukabu criticized everything I did. Then he suddenly yelled, 
I've spoken ill of the third promise and must punish myself, and proceeded to slam his head into the into an Uipo tree. I told him not to worry about it again, and it was like snuffing out a candle. He's an odd one, that's for sure. At least we've seen to the poles with to uh, to the poles and the new eye. Now we just have to wait for the feathers and from the twins. All right, we should get some rest before the excitement begins. Over there, by the float, isn't the third promise? Then the rumors are true. She's trying to complete the feat of reeds by reviving Ihihana. The festival is a prayer for healthy crops, but does she honestly believe that that will be enough to save our harvest? The second promise, meanwhile, barely glanced at the fields before leaving. Uh, before leaving Akanu altogether. Maybe we asked too much of our young claimants. Oh, it wouldn't be too quick to count Kona, Kona out. A friend of mine overheard him muttering up by the reeds, something about what needs to be done. Is that so? Perhaps we'll get to see another of his innovations firsthand. Eh, that sounds like icon our Kona. One look at the reeds was all he needed to pick up a, or think up a solution. But then as it may, our own solution is nearly ready. Indeed, as soon as the others get back, our long-awaited festival can begin. It took some doing, but we managed to gather competitors to vie for the title of Wind's Chosen. The winner was only too happy to donate his feathers. You should have seen it. He called forth an incredible gust and sent his feather sailing from Malms. We had to turn ourselves, but it's more difficult than it looks. Poor Aaronville's twirl... Rolled in the air for a moment before landing on his foot. I'm a gleaner. Magic is not part of our training. As for us, we've brought the wood and gemstone replacements crafted by Wukabu. All that's left is to attach them. Has it been decided who will ride the float? Hmm... Papa was the guest of honor last time I was here. I remember being surprised they could even lift the thing with a hulking weight on top of it. The rider must be a personage of great esteem, which is why an invitation is usually extended to the Dawn Servant. This time, however, I have another in mind. Oh, who is it? Our beloved Ihihana, the lifting of wings is only being held because of you and your companions. Thus do I nominate you, Wuklamat, as our guest of honor. Huh? Me? <sighs> this boat won't make me seasick, will it? Probably not. I don't think so. Then weigh anchor. I can hardly refuse a request from one even more enthusiastic about the festival than me. I would be delighted to ride your float. Thank you, Wuklamat. I have roles for the rest of you as well. We'll be carrying the festival float in a slow procession towards... Uh... Ozanuaki, Where the sacred likeness of... Kishaihi is ensconced. Kishaihi. That's as close as I'm gonna get. Alright. What I'd like you to do is clear the path of dangerous wildlife so that the procession can move along unimpeded. Alright, well, consider it done. You expect me to sit still until Wukavu is finished with the float? Let me come along and help with the clearing. As you know, I'm not much for fighting. I'll stay behind and assist Wukavu with the repairs. If you aren't sure where to go, where you need to go, the path I spoke of begins the south of the village and branches off to the east. I will lead you across the bridges to the stride of the sun. 
Right, then we shall see to clearing it end to end. Yep, that is a task we can do. Trial. The degree to which Wukavu pursues his interests is remarkable. Apparently, his studies of the Kozamuka region were so invigorating that he decided to move here and immerse himself in the culture. An alphanum. If the float functions as I think it does, I would not be surprised if we're if we're attracting the creatures. The concentration of ether would be an irresistible lure. Alice. Go we'll visit the ready. We'll make short work of this task. All right, and Wook, Mott. As Lino Hano said, Kozanuaki should be down this way. Uh, then off to the east when the path branches. Then something about bridges and the stride of the sun. Anyway, let's split up and get to work. Once you've called all the threats you can find, we'll meet up in front of Isaihi. All right, let's start working our way there. The next one's on that little island over there. There's the stride of the sun. There's Wook Lamont over there. Taking care of business. All right, we've got one more target of our own up here. destination.
Ah, so you were a step ahead of us. This must be the likeness of Kishaihi. The Hanu Hanu deity of the harvest. Hmm. Reminds me of something I saw in Academia Nighter. I was half expecting a flying whale. Let's just say, even their sacred images are woven with reeds. Makes you appreciate how much their culture evolves around the reed harvest, doesn't it? It is said that Shikai or Kishaihi was worshipped on another continent. His ancient faith was then brought to Tural by the first Hanu Hanu. Hmm, the Hanu migrated here from another continent? Then may have the two do share a common ancestor. Uh, this is all very fascinating, but shouldn't we be getting back to Lino Hanu? You'll want to know what the path is safe for the procession. Right, I need to ride on the float. I'll run ahead and tell him we're done here. Meanwhile, an Alkanu. Well, look who it is. <laughs> Not sure we heard you right, old man. Why don't you say that again? As many times as you'd like. The Third Promise tasked me with repairing this float, and I'll not relinquish it to an uncultured brute like you. Much less one that can't even manage a simple greeting. We wanted to handle this in a civilized way, but we're more than willing to <laughs> kill you. We have a two-headed problem. Yes, please hurry. She's on her way back already? Stand back, Wukevu! I will protect the float! <laughs> Are you trying to be brave, little bird? I could never have repaired the float alone. Not properly. But thanks to Wuklamat and her friends, we can hold Ihihana again! This is a priceless treasure! And as festival leader, I would die to protect it! Uh, very well, if that's what you want. Akurchacha! into that blow and uh, didn't work good the better for you to understand the gulf between us but you need more lessons we'll carve them into your menji hide until you cry and beg forgiveness reinforcements are here Your brilliant plan was to steal the float and take the credit. The so-called blessed siblings are nothing but cheats. <laughs> Your scorn is sweet music. Come, weaklings. We'll crush you each in turn. Or all together, if you'd like. Calm yourself, Chosen One. If you fight in earnest, this will end in a massacre. What's more, 
We have word that our other prospect is on the verge of success. Hmm. Then it would be foolish to expand effort, sweating nuts. <laughs> Lucky for you. Eh. I don't know. Two heads. I see my mook still clings to that loathsome hope. Talk to us, third promise. You're not dying, are you? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> It'll take more than that to kill me. So. Are we having this festival or not? Yes! Yes, we are! All right then, let's get to it. Yeah, he's lucky we didn't have to knock him on his ass. Alright. You know? Uh, thank you for coming to our rescue. I tried to protect the float, but against that two head, I may as well have not been there at all. Nonsense. You stood your ground and brought us the time we needed to make it back. You were incredibly brave. Alright, I don't need any die. We'll just take the... The cash. All right, Aaronville. A tense encounter. I'm thankful Alpha No thought to share those link pearls. How'd I say? Waited for us to leave so he could steal the float. A coward and a thief. Trial. I'm thankful we made it back before anyone was seriously injured. Alpha No. Given the nature of the right of succession, I expect such altercations are inevitable. Muklamat. I'm glad we kept the float out of Bakul Jaja's clutches, but gods, he brushed me aside like it was a bothersome gnat. Alright, Wukavu. With that exciting interlude over, you'll be pleased to know that my repairs are finished as well. Before we commence the festival, however, it would be cur a courtesy to inform the villagers that Ihihana will be held after all. Go forth, but do not forget our greetings. Uh, your greetings at this stage. I should hope the reminder is unnecessary. Oh, Kali. Oh, oh, Kali. All right, we need to go around and say that to people. Very well. We will start over here. And switch by chat mode to say... Oh, Kali. I thank you for letting me know. I would very much like to attend the festival, but the repairs should be finished as soon as possible. What to do, what to do. And it is raining, as of course it is. Alright, this guy. Oh, Kali. All right, the festival is about to begin. Uh, what do you expect me to say? 
Besides, of course I'll be there. Cleaning up the storm's aftermath may have been hard on us, but the lifting of wings is tradition, and a joyous one at that. I won't sit here brooding my days away. Give me a moment to get ready. And mournful Hanu. Oh, Hakali. What? The float is fixed? Our fallen friends will be glad to know that Ihihana will soon be underway. Uh, they would have wanted us to honor them with celebration, not let their loss deter us from it. I must go and enjoy the festival for those who no longer can. Alright. Word has been spread. <laughs> Alright. The Hanu were pleased to hear their festival was going ahead, I imagine. It seems so. That is well. Once your friends return, the lifting of wings can begin at last. So few have come. Patience. Once Ihihana gets underway, no Hanu will be able to resist joining in. Just so. Ukewu knows well the heart of the Hanu. Have faith, Third Promise, and climb aboard the float. It is time for the lifting of wings. Right. Off we go! Ikihana is a prayer for bountiful harvest. But this is not its only meaning. It is also an exchange of pledges between rider and bearers. A commitment to a long and fruitful friendship. Listen well, friends! The personage we bear today is Wuklamat, the savior of our beloved festival! Let your shoulders burn or your feathers fall out, but do not even think of dropping her! Ready and... <laughs> I could get used to this. Will empty bellies stop you from joining in the fun? Come and help us carry the float! Well, well, well. To see the day that Dawn's promise would ride our boat again. We've not had the honor since you were here, Gulul Jaja. Right, we've enough bearers now. Onwards to Kozaduaki! Oh, looks like she's doing okay, not getting seasick. <laughs> oh, 
Was this thing also an arcane focus? Watch well, for you are about to bear witness to the true glory of Ihihana. Float draws upon our life force, concentrating and amplifying the energy. Kishaihi then receives that energy and expels it in a great burst, where it showers down upon the land to replenish its vital currents. And it has immediate effect. Excellent. It worked. Like a literal charm. The float really was helping the reeds. That was amazing. To think that such a thing was even possible. Does look like I got all of it though. All right. Thoughts, everybody? Ooka -boo. I told you, denying spectacular. Trial. Even deprived of, their, deprived of their usual sustenance, the Hanu seemed invigorated the moment the festival began. Ihi Hana truly is magical. Anvil? I wasn't sure what to expect, but the festival was admittedly impressive. Alphano? With their fields rejuvenated, the Hanu Hanu too might finally replenish their flagging reserves of ether. And LSA? I'd like to take a turn riding the float. What? It looked like fun. Don't pretend the thought didn't cross your mind. Alright. Lamot. Alright, should I have left the float behind like that? I was so excited to see the reeds. Nothing to worry yourself over. My brethren have been swept up by festival fever. Last I saw, they were taking turns of carrying the poles on the way back to the village. Uh, please feel free to look over the fields and enjoy the sight of what you've accomplished. Some of them still look a bit sickly. I imagine even the harvest magic has its limits. If the Hanu continue their festival tradition year after year, though, the entire field should eventually recover. Where does that leave us with the feet, then? You've got nothing to fear on that account. Our situation could never have resolved itself. The revival of even a single reed would have served to demonstrate your commitment to the task. That you recognized the nature of the float and found a near perfect solution in Ihihana proves your dedication. What's more, I don't think I've seen the festival produce such impressive results since I was a mere chirper. Ah, <sighs> we have been lax in maintaining the float, diluting its magic and Reducing Ihihana to hollow theater. Go 
Cortana. All right. Do you have a solution? I was delayed by an unpleasant encounter, but it seems I arrived at a good time. Fertilizer, I guess. Oh, isn't that wonderful? What? You just pour in some mystery liquid and problem solved? Stagnant ether was to blame for the reed's poor condition. I assumed that was an alchemical concoction which enhances ethereal conductivity. It utilized the flowing water as an ethereal current, thereby promoting the transfer of life energies. A method I could not have devised without the education I received at the Studium, and the cooperation of my Archon allies. Archon allies? Archon allies? You see, Lamachi, this is why we need to embrace foreign knowledge and technology. Employed appropriately, they make light work of what would otherwise be arduous labor. There's no need to lug around heavy floats. Other than their cultural significance. Hmm. Well, you always were the clever one, brother. Your approach was no less effective, Wuklamart. It achieved the same result. Indeed it did. And you enjoyed the festival, yes? I did! It was so much fun! Having visited your village before, I thought I knew everything about it. As it turns out, I knew very little. About the reeds, about Ihihana. With all I've learned this time, I feel as though I've really come to know the Hanu. I like you even more now than I did before. The feeling is mutual. And it's not just you who had a lot to learn either. I'll never look at our float the same way again. The two of you have exceeded expectations. Come forth and claim your stones. Five more to go. And on to the next. And these are. Not even a moment of celebration. That's gonna for you. A third promise? You must join us for Ikikana next season. As Dawn Servant, of course. Yeah. Right. It's back to Tulihola for now. Thank you for having us. I look forward to seeing you all again. I think she's a lot easier to lift in that float than uh, I'm sure Gulu Jaja is. <laughs> These are interesting times indeed. Ah, uh, now you. The concoction was brewed by Kona himself. It's a test vial, but it should contain the same reagents. Good work. 
We'll use whatever we must to win. For win we must. Yep. Still, uh... Trying to cheat your way through. Alright. Alpha note. I'm curious as to who these Archons the Second Promise mentioned could possibly be. Mm, I wonder. Let's see. Uh, where is Bakul Jajagarn, I wonder? And what did his follower mean by their, their other prospect? While Kona seems a decent sort, he strikes me as the, a man who likes to keep others at a distance. Anvil. That makes two out of seven keystones. So far, so good. Alright. My journey has just started already. I have met so many wonderful people. Wukavu, for one, he's a bit eccentric, but everyone can stand to be as respectful of other cultures as he is. And Linuhanu, I warmed my heart to see him honor his departed friend through Ihihana and help others do the same. I can't help but feel excited, thinking who else I might meet over the course of the contents. Come on, let's head back to Kabalyov TA. Alright, looks like we've got some uh, side quests here to do, but I will do those on my own time. Because if I were trying to try to include all of the side quests, this series would take forever. And, you know, they're, they're interesting, but, you know, they don't really contribute that much to the main story, and, you know... I'll leave those uh, for everyone to do on their own. All right, Uklamats. Look at us. The contest has barely begun. We already have two keystones. Surely even my talented brothers aren't doing this well. Uh, we can only hope. Well, I know they all have at least one each. All right. Next on the agenda. Uh, we've now won keystones from both the feet of reeds and the feet of gold. Really, that means our approach to the contest was the right one. So it would seem, by continuing to retrace Gulu Dondo's journey as presented in the saga, we should find the remaining electors in turn. Then let's visit the giants next. As Kral said, or like Kral said, the fact that they were searching for the Golden City might mean they know something useful. Uh, the home of the Yokoi is in the upper reaches of Rukopacha. Unless you're keen on scaling the cliffs, I'll we'll take the long way around. Uh, through Kozamuka. Uh, this route will take us close to the Moblin Village, which is another important location in the saga. This will lead all the keystones eventually. It makes sense to pay them a visit while we're passing through. Alright, so we call the Moblins first then. Let's head there right now. I'm afraid right now is going to be a problem. The flight of Wee Wingless, the great stairs leading to the Moblin settlement, collapsed in the storm. Uh, what are we to do then? There is an alternative, but it requires preparation. Until it's ready, you could rest at the cabins or see more of the city, whatever you prefer. Uh, just to be sure, we'll accept any method of travel as long as it gets us to our destination. Of course. Who do you take me for? Hmm. Then as your guide, I will see the ar arrangements. It probably means it's going to be a form of travel that's going to make you sick. 
Well, it seems we have some free time on our hands. Let us make the most of it. I need to get my axe repaired. I nicked the blade pretty badly when I took a swing at Baku Jaja. It reminds me. I forgot around introducing you to Rumpley, did I? He's um, the man in charge of Wachu Meki Meki. And a good person to know. Wanna come along? Sure. Why not? Let's go then. Alrighty then, Uglamot. Ready? The markets of Wachu Meki Meki are to the east on the other side of the Bayside Bevy. And Uglamot will be accompanying us. One quick Ethernet teleport. That's all we need. Rupli. My, my, the third promise. How might I assist you this fine day? Well, met Ropley. I need to buff a nasty nick out of my axe blade. Uh, yes, it's been chipped quite terribly. Uh, trying to cleave rocks again, were we? <laughs> Reference to the warrior quests. Uh, something like that. Uh, can you fix it? Uh, you stand among Tural's most prestigious gathering of artisans and ask this question? This child's play. We'll have it repaired for you in two shakes of an alpaca's tail. Alright, good to hear. I leave it in your capable hands. Uh, who is your companion, if I may ask? Uh, this is Ayame, a great adventurer I recruited from across the salt. I brought her here to meet you, actually. I thought she might have reason to visit Wachu Meki Meki sooner or later. Alright, then allow me to introduce myself. I'm Ropley, humble representative of this Grand Center of Trade. A pleasure to meet you, Ayame. You there, stop dithering in the shadows and announce your business already. Ah, you. Hmm. I've seen that man somewhere before. Yeah, the guy on the boat. A jewelry maker you met on the voyage over? Oh, I remember. I spoke with him, too. Fonjon Tang. Yes, that was his name? You've been loitering like a, fl a flighty admirer who can't pluck up the courage to confess his feelings. Out with it, then. Why are you here? I, uh, um, that is to say... And we're no closer to solving that enigma. Hmm, I wonder if we could use someone to talk to. I say we go and ask. Let me know by Link Pearl if you find him first. Alright, I'm sure we're gonna find him first. Yep, this is the crafter's area, so, uh. We won't be doing much with that, because I don't do any crafting on this character. I love the city themes here. Oh, there he is. Oh, 
All right, Ponjontain. All right, you were conversing with Master Ropley? But, but wait, we've met before, haven't we? On the ship. You found him? Good. I'll be right there. Uh, why did you run off like that? Do you have business with Ropley or not? Please, you need to concern yourselves with my affairs. I'm undeserving of such attention. Huh? What are you going on about? I beg of you, do not ask me to explain. Do not. Alright, well, the more you tell me not to, the more curious I become. Besides, you look like you need a friend. Uh, you are too kind. Uh, so be it. I suppose I can share with you a morsel of my misery. Before I came to Tulialol, I worked as a goldsmith at the most prestigious jewelry maker in, of, in all of Alda. As Thames Aesthetics. Oh, it started off well enough, but, the day, but as the days passed, everything began to go wrong. Compared to the masterpieces of my talented colleagues, my products were lacking. Mediocre. I lost all confidence. Crippling doubt had possessed me, and any veneer of bravado I tried to put forth soon crashed beneath its weight. Thus did I take ship, hoping to find a fresh beginning on new shores. And as you witnessed, I lacked the courage to even approach a potential employer. You stand before a man wallowing in the wreckage of his ill-spent existence. So dramatic. Uh, alright then. You offered a morsel and then served us the full course. You must have really wanted someone to hear your story. If you like, I could try to give you a few words of advice. Hmm. I'm gonna have some issues with my throat. Might have to stop here soon. Alright, then you have experience with my predicament of feeling terribly inadequate compared to your undeniably superior peers. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, I, uh... Uh, kind of uh, hit her right in the insecurities. Uh, not me. I'm Wuklamot, third promise of Tuliola. Daughter of the Dawn Servant. Uh, oh, of course, you're a member of the royal family. Peace gives my presumptuousness. What of you? Have you ever measured your work against that of your colleagues and found yourself wanting? Hmm. You can't measure your worth by the success of others. Definitely. How could I not? Should my work not meet the same exacting standards? No new commissions will be forthcoming. Uh, what then was the point of my becoming a goldsmith? Hmm, looking back, it was my father who inspired me to take up the trade. His exquisite creations brought radiant smiles to the faces of his clients, and I admired him deeply for it. When the course was striving to be as great a goldsmith as him, I lost sight of my original motivation. All I ever wanted was to spread my joy through my craft, as he did. Or spread joy through my craft. Perhaps, perhaps I'll give this one last try. Uh, thank you both for reminding me of what is truly important. What is truly important. Okay, I had to pause there for a bit. Should hopefully be feeling a little bit better. All right, let's just finish this up. Buklamat. Dots. Oh, sorry, Ami. I didn't mean to ignore you. But yes, I'm glad to see Fonjotain giving himself another chance. 
Mezcal Marinated Swamp Monk. Hmm. I can't help but wonder if Von Jotain will follow through. Let's see if he's actually gone uh, to Top of Ropley. Let's get over there. Alright, so it's kind of you to come, but you didn't worry. I found my courage. Alright. Let's see how this goes. Uh, pray accept my apologies for my earlier behavior. My name is Fongentain, uh, and I'm a goldsmith from Olda in faraway Eorzea. I realize this is a bold request, but I should like to continue practicing my trade here in Wachimiki Miki, if you'll have me. I only asked for the opportunity to bring happiness to others with my creations. That's what it was about. You were looking for work. Consider yourself hired. Uh, Watch Miki Miki is always in need of skilled craftsmen and women. I'll handle the necessary paperwork. Can you start tomorrow? Easiest job interview ever. All right. Yes, yes, of course. I must thank you both again for your sage and timely advice. I don't know that I was all that helpful. Uh, but you were. Had you not come to speak to me, I would not have had that a moment of much-needed self-reflection. Uh, the arrangements have been made. Come and meet me at the entrance of High Tide Harbor. Oh, I almost forgot. Do you have my axe ready, Ropley? Uh, ready and waiting. Behold the sublime touch of a wa Wachu Miki Miki artisan. Oh, it's as sharp and deadly as the first day I held it. Thank you. Oh, good luck to you, Fongetain. Let me know if that doubt creeps back in. I'd be happy to talk you out of it. As for us, we should head for the harbor. Wouldn't want to keep Aaronville waiting. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to have to keep Aaronville waiting because we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. And we'll pick this back up another time. All right. So for now, we will stop here. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.